Hello and welcome to Perian Flax's Guide to Dota 2 Part 2, or Everything I've Learned About Dota After 12 Long Years as a Scrub. When I started making these guides, I was a much, much younger man. I was still in my 30s instead of pushing 50. I was still bald, of course. I was a good deal lighter and a good deal worse at Dota. 12 years ago, I was basically about a 3k scrub. But in the interceding years, I've risen to the ranks of about a 3k scrub. I've found that in life if there's a curve, I am in the middle of that curve. The only things I excel at are boldness and cider consumption. One thing I was always bad at was drawing, which is why to celebrate 10 years of friendship and because I wanted this to actually look good, I've delegated the drawing to one of my bestest Dota chums in the world, Alex, aka Raya, aka Sheepstick, aka Sheepo. You know her. You love her. I don't care what you think about her doing the drawings and me not. I am delighted about it. I hated drawing and honestly it was one of the biggest things putting me off making new guides. So here we are. Enjoy. Again, when it comes to Dota, I've never been high rank. I've always been Mr. Average. So when people ask me why I don't do guides anymore, it's because I can't honestly make videos about me learning the game when I played so much of it. The old guides were when I didn't even know the names of all the heroes. So instead of trying to remake those old style guides, I'm doing something new. For this one, I'm going to impart some of the tiny nuggets of wisdom that I have learned the hard way. And please bear in mind, I'm not very good at Dota and I mostly play position four and five, the sort of supporty roles. I don't play as a core all that often. And I know most of you watching this are support cucks too because Chad core players think they know it all and they're a humorless bunch of try hard boring bastards. Except offlaners. They're cool. A simple one to start with stairs. If you can't account for the whereabouts of the enemy heroes, never go upstairs. Never stand at the bottom of the stairs. Don't even pause near the stairs and take the time to evaluate the situation. You can't see up there. They can see down. Run. Run for your life. This is not like when you pop to the loo at 2 a.m. You run up the stairs so the banister monster can't get you. You, you just live downstairs now, all right? You're going to have to sleep on the sofa. Wards. Lots of people seem to think of wards as a permanent feature of the map. You're not creating a rockery in a a charming English garden for future generations to enjoy. Wards die. Be prepared for that. But don't be an idiot and try to jam wards down any old place and scurry back to safety just so you can say you placed wards. If I asked you to cook dinner and you decided to prepare me some warmed up cat food, I could technically say you cooked me dinner. It's technically true, but you've also done the worst possible job of it. Watch a, watch a Jenkins vid or something. It doesn't take long to learn good ward spots. Spells. Please, lads, cast your spells. I am so determined to get this point across, I even made it my voice line at TI. The number of times I see players run into the hills with all their spells up is honestly astonishing. I don't care if my pos 5 lion might die. Stun them. Finger someone. Do anything. Die for your carry. Save them. There's little to no value in our support disruptor standing around getting pinged by his teammates while the throne falls. It's a team game. Play like it. If your first instinct in every fight is self-preservation, why are you playing support? It's very main character syndrome to see your hero's life as the most important just because that's your hero. Items. What items you buy is probably going to determine the game in all honesty. There'll always be some hot item in Dota that everyone wants to get. The time of making this vid, it's Kanda. Prior to that, it was Phylactery. Way back, it was Meteor Hammer, etc, etc, etc. There's always some item you want to get because it's fun. But you know what items have been in the game since forever and are still good? Four Staff, Glimmer Cape, BKB. Those are three pretty solid items. They could make a big difference. Just, just think about it. I, I'm sure you know best, all right? All I'm saying is, do you have to meme this game? Could you meme next game instead? Because daddy needs a dub, all right? I, I need a dub. Read the patch notes. Uh, I know, I know. Reading is boring as shit. There's TikToks of people getting injured in workplace accidents out there and they ain't gonna watch themselves. But the patch notes do kind of matter, especially when you've been autopiloting your two offlane hero pool for the last six months and you suddenly realize, oh shit, oh, that item isn't even in the game anymore, huh? Oh. And now you've got a ring of health that doesn't do shit. Do your homework, read the patch notes. TP scrolls and dust. You know the way you almost killed their carry, but some genius support on the other team glimmered them? Or the way Invoker was on 10 HP and Ghost walked away and lived? And you're standing there with an iron branch in your pocket feeling like a moron. My rule is that I buy dust every time they have an invis hero or someone who can turn invisible or just in around 10 minutes in all other cases. If some crafty support gets glimmer before then, fair enough, they deserve to live. But just be that guy that gets dust. When your team is panicky, uh, any detection, uh, you can be the I got you guys and you can win their hearts and minds. Also TP scrolls, if you don't have one, I got no love for you. Friends. Long ago, in my first Dota guide, I said, you will lose friends playing this game. I was playing with the wrong people back then. I've made more friends playing Dota now than 
pretty much any other activity in my life. If the people you play with are not fun to play with, play with other people. If you don't have other people, find some. My Discord, I know I'm going to toot my own horn here, but it is stuffed with great people who are absolutely abysmal at Dota. Play with them. Play for fun with chill people. Imagine that. You don't have to play with toxic people in pubs. Speaking of having fun with friends, I've got something for you that you and your Dota buddies are going to love. In the deepest recesses of the frozen north lies a city called Birmingham. It is a desolate place, offering naught but hardship and misery for dwellers and visitors alike. But once a century, an event takes place therein. Birmingham 2024. ESL have braved the journey to those lands and now, once more, you may watch Dota in the glamorous Birmingham venue place. Do so at once. Gather a party of hardy souls and prepare your eyes, ears and bowels for a tournament of wonders, heartbreak and triumph all rolled into one. Tickets are available at esl.gg slash bmh. Birmingham. It's coming home. It's coming home. High ground and hitting buildings. Avoid it. Just don't go up there, ever. You're not impressing anyone, getting 20 chip damage on a tier 3 tower and then all dying. Please just see the enemy base as an impenetrable fortress of death and never, ever go there. Ever. You need permission from your mum and the correct forms filled out in triplicate to go up those stairs and hit high ground. If you don't have those things, don't go. You don't go. Never speak to the enemy. Mute the entire enemy team ASAP. You can even tick a box in options that mutes all enemy players by default. Use it. There's nothing to say. Either they will tilt you by saying something annoying, or you will attempt to tilt them, and instead motivate them to kill you and win the game. You stand to gain nothing by speaking. Be an adult. Keep your mouth shut and play. Let them fight amongst themselves. Don't offer yourself as a target. I will permit a GG at the end, but other than that, say nothing. Ever. Even if it was not a GG. In those instances, you just type G. But don't be that guy that drops a question mark at minute 10 or aggressively tips, because when you lose, you just turned a routine win into the most celebrated victory in your opponent's history. As your throne falls, you will curl into a ball and weep while they spam question marks and tip you until your teeth bleed. You are only setting yourself up for disaster if you speak to them. Be the silent MMR assassin and punish them without uttering a word. Be classy. Be classy. Some heroes are bullshit and genuinely terrifying. Depends on the patch, but it's just the way it is. Ban those heroes. If you can't ban them, try to pick them. If you can't pick them, try to counter them. And if none of that works, get down on your knees and pray that the enemy player doesn't know how to play them. Because if some guy with 100 games picks Meepo or Morph or Visage, then yeah, you, you know what it is. This is going to suck. Learn what you can, enjoy the terror, treat it like a horror movie, just be ready for it. All you can do is GG go next. Don't cry about it, and definitely do not go make a thread on Reddit. Avoid this place. Treat it like it's the worst neighborhood in your area. Times Square or Central Paris or Luton. A place to be not just avoided, but hopefully eliminated entirely from the map. You will not find helpful posts there. You will not find funny things there. You will not find community there. It is a hellscape bereft of hope and joy. The people that post there are not indicative of the community. Trust me. The people that post there are sad, angry little people who don't really enjoy anything, let alone the best game ever made. The same could be said of pretty much any Reddit community over a thousand members, because people suck. But people on the internet are the worst. I'm building this way because I saw a post on Reddit has cost more MMR than any other single factor. I guarantee you this. Plate mail stacking lion, I am looking at you. Speaking of MMR, yes, it is real. No, you are not stuck in Guardian because of your team. You just suck. That's fine. I've sucked for 12 years. I still love the game. If you want to blame your team, go play with bots or find a PvE game. It is not your team. It is you. You are the reason you are Guardian. Be honest with yourself. You know that scene in Goodwill Hunting where Robin Williams is like, it's not your fault? Well, he was not talking about MMR. It is 100% your fault. The minimap. You should be looking at the minimap like it holds the secret to life itself. Get used to checking it all the time. Don't stare at the minimap, but glance subtly. You have to be like a pro tier pervert who never gets caught peeking at a pair of tits. Imagine the map has eyes and will catch you staring at it, but also imagine that the minimap is genuinely gorgeous. You just don't want it to know that you're peeking. Think of it that way, all right? Just a tip. People who are level 30 on a hero almost always suck at Dota. Sorry, but it's true. I've seen so many people mash Winter Wyvern, and you see that level 30 marker on them and you think, oh no, this guy's going to be amazing at Winter Wyvern. But no, that person has taken the time to learn two heroes and they picked one of them. Other than that, they are garbage. They don't even know what the other heroes do. Never be afraid of this. Unless they're picking level 30 Invoker, then you can be afraid. Pro Dota. I've worked a lot 
of pro Dota events over the last 12 years, and I've watched a hell of a lot of games. I've spoken to the pros, done karaoke with them, been there for their highs and their lows, always lurking in the background like a creepy uncle. But I have learned one thing, and one thing only, from the Dota that you play and the Dota that they play are not compatible. You cannot copy their builds, their playstyles, their drafts. You cannot. Don't even try. You are a Sunday League footballer or someone who plays badminton once a week at work. They are literal gods of the game. You want to copy God? Who the fuck do you think you are? Enjoy watching them, but please, don't think you can do what Lionel Messi does and dribble past the entire enemy team and chip the keeper. You are not him. You are not him. Valve. Never, ever try to predict what they're going to do next or attempt to rationalize their decisions. You cannot. Instead, imagine a hole has opened up between our reality and another. A portal, if you will. Stuff comes out of the portal. It never goes in. You cannot see into the portal. The stuff that comes out sometimes makes it seem like the people on the other side of the portal can't see to our side either, and perhaps don't really understand us at all. It sometimes seems like the portal leads to a dimension where everyone is insane, but it also seems like they are insane geniuses. Regardless, it's a portal that has given us some pretty amazing stuff over the years, including the best game ever made for free. I love the portal, but I also fear it. That's a healthy way to think of the portal. Dota has given me a career I didn't even know existed. Travelled all over the world, I've made some amazing friends, seen some amazing things, played for 12,000 hours. That's 500 days. One eighth of my life over the last 12 years has been spent playing Dota, probably closer to one fifth of my waking life. And I'm a happily married man with a family who was blessed with the ability to play a game for a living. I'm very, very, very lucky that it was this game. If you haven't played Dota, do it. It is amazing. It will take you about a thousand hours just to get to grips with it, but please persist because the payoff is worth it. Just bear in mind that once you get into it, nothing else will quite hit 